Hello everyone and welcome to Hit Bullseye. My name is Manish and in this video we are going to discuss the current affairs for the third week of April 2023. So let's take a look at the topics one by one. First of all, the Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy has been adjudged as the wealthiest CM in India. So there is a report that is released which uh, uh, basically ranks all the chief ministers of India uh, in terms of their wealth. So Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Mr. Jagan Mohan Reddy is the richest CM in India. Not that it's a bad thing. But of course, uh, it must be his uh, ancestral property or something like that. Of course, if it's disproportionate to his income, then it raises eyebrows. Otherwise, it's all right. So this is not something on which we should be judging all the politicians. But uh, if the tax authorities find something fishy, then that's a different thing. Secondly, in the Time magazine's 100 most influential people list, so Time magazine is one of the most authentic voice of the people and in its 100 most influential people list, Shah Rukh Khan and S. Rajamouli, both the persons from Indian film industry have made it to the list. These are the only two persons in that list. So we'll talk about that. Nandini Gupta is Femina Miss India 2023, which was recently uh, held. The pageant was recently held. And she is the new Famina Miss India. Nepal has become the founding member of International Big Cats Alliance, IBCA, which was set up by the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi last week. So Nepal has become the founding member of the International Big Cats Alliance. Another news from international affairs, uh, India is set to chair the Commonwealth Group on Reform of Financial Architecture, which is a, a moment of honor for India that India has been allowed to chair this particular group. In an unfortunate development, Syria has become the world's largest narco state. Narco means we're talking about drugs, illicit drugs. Syria has become the world's largest narco state. Pravasi Bharatiya Samman has been given away by the government of India. And they ki sal Pravasi Bharatiya Samman kise diya gaya hai. Elon Musk is planning to launch Truth GPT, artificial intelligence platform. So, Chat GPT has been creating a lot of ripples for the last few months in the world. And now Elon Musk is trying to launch its own. Uh, version of artificial intelligence platform which is going to be named truth gpt most likely another product has got the gi or geographical indication tag that is the kambam grapes of tamil nadu in the last few weeks we have discussed uh, the gond paintings of madhya pradesh the banarsi pan of varanasi and the mithila makhana of bihar are also some of the items which have got geographical indication tags. So many products of India get this tag and this is an addition to that list. A new book on Sachin Tendulkar, Sachin at 50, Celebrating a Maestro, has been released. So Sachin Tendulkar was born in 1973. So yes, in 2023 completes uh, 50 years on 24th of April, I think, yes. So, on that occasion, this book has been written. Angela Merkel, the former Chancellor of Germany, has received Germany's highest honor. Asha Bhosle, the veteran singer of Indian cinema, is set to receive Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Puraskar, an award which was instituted, I think, only two or three years back only. So, she is the recipient of the latest award. Argentina is set to host under-20 FIFA World Cup. Re uh, earlier, this uh, FIFA World Cup was supposed to be hosted, I think, by Indonesia, but uh, now the venue has been changed. So, Argentina is going to be the new host. And finally, Sonam Wongchuk. This is a very famous person. Maybe uh, most of you may not be aware with the name of the person, but once I show you the picture of this person, 
and will relate some context to it, you will be able to find out. If you are an Amir Khan fan especially. So, Sonam Wangchuk has been conferred with prestigious Santokba Humanitarian Award. So, we will see what are the achievements of uh, Mr. Sonam Wangchuk and why is he famous. Let's take a look at all these topics one by one. Starting with the list of the wealthiest as well as the most modest chief ministers in India. So, this is a report that has been released by ADR, Association for Democratic Reforms. ADR, Association for Democratic Reforms has launched this report and out of the 28 chief ministers and two union territories, so Delhi and Pondicherry have uh, uh, legislative assemblies. So, there are 30 of the total chief ministers. Out of them, 29 are, are millionaires in India. And Jagan Mohan Reddy from Andhra Pradesh is the richest among them with the assets of 510 crore rupees. While Mamta Banerjee, the CM of West Bengal, has the lowest assets of 15 lakh rupees. So, here are the top three richest chief ministers of India. Number one, YSR Reddy of Andhra Pradesh. Number two, Pema Khandu of Arunachal Pradesh with assets worth Rs. 163 crores. And third is Mr. Naveen Patnayak of Odisha with the assets of 63 crores. If we talk about the bottom three in terms of wealth, then the poorest is Mamta Banerjee of West Bengal with just 15 lakh rupees worth of assets. Mr. Pinarai Vijayan of Kerala with 1.2 crore rupees worth of assets and at number 3 is Manohar Lal Khattar with 1.3 crore rupees worth of assets. Mr. Khattar is the CM of Haryana. These are what the figures suggest. The report did not take into account the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir which is the third union territory presumably to have a Chief Minister but it does not have any. So, Jammu and Kashmir is a UT but it does not have a Chief Minister at present. So, a total of 30 CMs were taken care of, 28 from the states and 2 from the UTs of Delhi and Puducherry. Next, Time magazine has listed two, you know, 100 most influential people in the world and out of that, India has got two, Shah Rukh Khan and S. Rajamali. Shah Rukh Khan, of course, in news for his latest offering, Pathan which has created ripples at the box office. Uh, more than 1,000 crore rupees it has earned on the box office, which is a record. And then uh, Mr. S. Rajamali, whose movies have been creating record one after another. His movies song RRR, his its song Natu Natu has become India's first, uh, you know, original song to win the best Oscar uh, this year. So, these two have made it to this list because of these reasons. There are certain people who are repeats on the list like Times 100 most influential people who are again and again on the list. So, for the fifth time in a row, we have Elon Musk on the list, fifth time. Janet Yellen, who is an economist uh, from USA, she has been uh, at the helm in IMF as well. So, she is also there at fourth time. Lionel Messi is on the list for third time. He is the footballer, Argentinian footballer. Beyonce. Pop star Beyonce is on the list for the third time. Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, the president of Brazil, is on the list for the third time. Mitch McConnell is for the third time and there are so many other people as well. If we talk about the youngest influential person in the world, that is Iga Swiatek, 21 year old and she is the youngest on the list. She is a lawn tennis player and she won uh, her first Grand Slam last year. So, these are the most influential people and SRK and S Rajamali are the only two Indians on the list. That is something you should know. Miss Nandini Gupta is Famina Miss India. So, uh, she is at the center. So, Miss Nandini Gupta has become the Famina Miss India 2023 and she is going to represent India at the Miss World pageant. 71st Miss World pageant which is going to be organized in the United Arab Emirates in the UAE. So, she will be representing India and she is Famina Miss India. If we talk about the runner-ups, 
the first runner up is shreya punja from delhi so shreya punja from delhi is first runner up and second runner up is thonanjam strela luwang from manipur but these are not very important names to remember nandini gupta is what you should remember next uh, in the last week's video we had discussed that uh, the government of india has formed this new alliance called the international big cats alliance ibca the now nepal has agreed to become one of the founding members of ibca right this is india's initiative and uh, nepal's minister for energy shakti bahadur bastet has agreed to become a founder member of ibca right the purpose of international big cat alliance is to conserve the seven big cats the seven big cats namely a lion tiger snow leopard leopard puma cheetah and jaguar these are the seven big cat species india to chair commonwealth group of reform for financial architecture so commonwealth is an international organization which is led by britain basically it contains all those countries which have been ruled by britain at one point of time and it engages on various issues it engages on like for example financial architecture it engages on people to people ties trade and some other forms of initiatives so this group of commonwealth which discusses financial architecture will now be chaired by india so that is what has been announced right so india has been appointed as the chair and nigeria has been appointed as the deputy chair of this particular group for reform on global financial architecture so this uh, certainly raises stature of india on this global platform syria has become the world's largest narco state it's an unfortunate news because uh, it's a infamous distinction to have to become a narco state is an infamous distinction to have it's not a very good thing it's not something to cheer about so syria has now become the world's largest narco state with the majority of its foreign currency earnings coming from production and export of captagon captagon this is a drug a synthetic drug which is highly addictive amphetamine commonly referred to as poor man's coke so captagon that means syria has earned a majority of its foreign currency from the production and export of captagon that's why it's a narco state right so with the definition of collins dictionary syria can be classified as a narco state as the illegal trade of narcotics forms a significant portion of its economy accounting for over 90% of the country's foreign currency earnings that is massive iska matlab syria ke 90% se bhi zyada foreign currency earning captagon ko export karne se aati hai which is an illegal drug can you believe that due to sanctions or a halt in trading with syria following the crackdown by president bashar al assad the regime in conjunction with lebanon's hezbollah group has increased the production of captagon to gulf countries pichle 11 12 saal se syria mein civil war chal rahi hai वहां के प्रेसिडेंट हैं बशर अल असाद तो उनके अगेंस्ट एंटी यू नो एंटी गवर्नमेंट प्रोटेस्ट बहुत ज्यादा हुए इसमें यूएस और रशिया भी इन्वॉल्व हो गए सो रशिया वाज सपोर्टिंग बशर अल असाद एंड यूएसए वाज सपोर्टिंग द डिसिडेंट्स और द मिलिटेंट्स अगेंस्ट बशर अल असाद दैट इज वाई द वॉर डजन सीम टू एंड लैक्स ऑफ पीपल हैव डाइड एंड मिलियंस हैव बिन डिसप्लेस्ड इन सीरिया इट्स अ ह्यूज ह्यूमैनिटेरियन क्राइसिस सो there were a lot of sanctions economic sanctions imposed on syria and therefore syria had to syria was forced to look to other ways of earning foreign exchange to isliye unhone ye wali drug banane shuru kar di aur gulf countries mein export karne shuru kar di and in gulf countries a lot of gulf countries people consume this drug you know in a large volume united states of america ne pichle saal captagon act banaya hai captagon act which links the trade of the drug to the assad regime in syria and labels it a transnational security threat 
राइट तो सीरिया ने पैसे अर्न करने के लिए गल्फ में ये ड्रग बहुत ज़्यादा एक्सपोर्ट करनी शुरू कर दी एंड दैट इज हाउ इट हैज बिकम अ नाको स्टेट कैप्टेगन इज पॉपुलर रिक्रिएशनल ड्रग अमंग द यूथ इन गल्फ स्टेट्स एंड इट इज बींग यूज बाई आर्म्ड इंडिविजुअल्स हु फील इनविंसिबल वाइल्ड अंडर इट्स इन्फ्लुएंस जितने भी आर्म्ड इंसर्जेंट्स हैं अलग अलग गल्फ कंट्रीज में पूरे मिडल ईस्ट में वो सब में एक बहुत पॉपुलर ड्रग है जो वो लोग लेते हैं इट इज समाइम रेफर टू एज कैप्टन करेज और जिहादी मैजिक पोशन सो दिस इज हाउ दिस इन फेमस ड्रग हैज बिन पॉपुलराइज थ्रू आउट गल्फ एंड नाउ सीरिया हैज बिन ऑफिशियली क्लासीफाइड एज अ नाको स्टेट बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स एक्सपोर्ट इट्स अ वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट टर्न ऑफ इवेंट्स आई वुड से प्रवासी भारतीय सम्मान प्रवासी भारतीय सम्मान इज गिवन टू अ पर्सन ऑफ इंडियन ओरिजिन हु हैज डन समथिंग सिग्निफिकेंट इन एनी पर्टिकुलर फील्ड इट कैन बी ट्रेड इट कैन बी इकोनॉमी पॉलिटिक्स और एनी अदर थिंग सो अ पर्सन ऑफ इंडियन ओरिजिन और इंडियन डायस्पोरा इज गिवन दिस पर्टिकुलर अवार्ड फॉर सर्टन अचीवमेंट इन अ पर्टिकुलर फील्ड सो दिस मैन हैज बिन कॉन्फर्ड दिस ईयर्स प्रवासी भारतीय सम्मान हिज नेम इज राज सुब्रमण्यम एंड ही इज द सी ई ओ ऑफ फेडेक्स आई एम श्योर फेडेक्स का नाम सबने सुना होगा इट इज वन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बिगेस्ट इंटरनेशनल यू कैन से कोरियर कंपनीज फेडेक्स इट्स अ ग्लोबल ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कंपनी सो ही इज एन इंडियन अमेरिकन एंड ही हैज बिन गिवन द प्रवासी भारतीय सम्मान टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री दिस इज द हाइएस्ट सिविलियन रिकोगशन बेस्टाउड बाय इंडिया अपॉन इंडिविजुअल ऑफ इंडियन ओरिजिन एंड इंडियन डायस्पोरा सबसे बड़ा अवार्ड है जो इंडियन डायस्पोरा को या प्रवासियों को दिया जा सकता है राइट सो ही लिव इन यूएस एंड ही इज द सीईओ ऑफ फेडेक्स राज सुब्रमण्यम इलन मस्क हैज डिसाइडेड टू लॉन्च ट्रूथ जीपीटी चैट जीपीटी को सॉर्ट ऑफ काउंटर करने के लिए बिकॉज ही थिंक्स चैट जीपीटी यू नो स्प्रेड अ लॉट ऑफ लाइज मे बी सो ही हैज यू नो he tweeted this particular thing what we need is truth gpt so this tweet of him uh, approximately 2 months back in february 2023 has now taken form of a real project so he has announced that he will be forming uh, this ai platform truth gpt to compete with microsoft and google's current offerings right google has also announced uh, bard B A R D Bard as a counter to or as a competitor to Truth uh, Chat GPT, and now he has announced Truth GPT. So it remains to be seen where this competition will go. Next, these are the Kambam grapes of Tamil Nadu, which have got the GI tag from the government of India. So these are the famous Kambam Paneer Tharachai, or the kambam grapes from tamil nadu which have got the gi tag there is a kambam valley in tamil nadu where this grape is grown it is also known as the grape city of south india and it is known for cultivating the panner thachai or muscat hambang variety of grapes ye grapes yahan pe pehli baar ek french priest ne introduce kiye the 1832 में यानी कि ऑलमोस्ट 200 साल पहले ये ग्रेप वेराइटी एक फ्रेंच प्रीस्ट ने यहाँ पे इंट्रोड्यूस की थी इन ग्रेप्स की स्पेशलिटी क्या है दे आर रिच इन विटामिन टार्टेरिक एसिड एंड एंटी ऑक्सीडेंट्स एंड दे रिड्यूस द रिस्क ऑफ सम क्रॉनिक डिजीज सो दे आर थेरेप्योटिक इन नेचर दे आर मेडिसिनल इन नेचर एंड दे आर ऑल्सो नोन फॉर दे सुपीरियर टेस्ट इनका टेस्ट भी सुपीरियर है और इनमें मेडिसिनल क्वालिटीज भी है इसलिए इन्हें जी आई टैग दिया गया है सो नाउ दे विल बी प्रोटेक्टेड वेन अ प्रोडक्ट गेट्स अ जी आई टैग बेसिकली देर आर रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द सेलिंग ऑफ दैट प्रोडक्ट देर इज क्वालिटी कंट्रोल एंड एवरी वन इज नॉट अलाउड टू सेल दैट पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट सो देर इज अ लाइसेंस दैट यू नीड टू अपटेन फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट एंड ओनली देन ओनली ऑथोराइज सेलर्स कैन सेल दैट प्रोडक्ट न्यू बुक ऑन सचिन तेंदुलकर हैज बिन रिलीज सो दिस इज द बुक Sachin at 50 celebrating a maestro Sachin at 50 so this april Sachin Tendulkar turned 
50 years of age and uh, so celebrating Sachin is a book on that. So 14th of, uh, sorry, 24th of April 2023 is the day when Sachin turned 50 years old and the name of the book is Sachin at 50 Celebrating a Maestro. Author is Borya Majumdar who is a renowned sports historian and a popular TV show host. Unhone ye book likhi hai. Isme Sachin Tendulkar ki puri ki puri life journey usme depict ki gai hai. And the book cover note is written by Gulzar, the world famous Hindi film lyricist. Angela Merkel, the former Chancellor of Germany, has received Germany's highest honor, which is Order of Merit. Order of Merit, Germany's highest award. So its equivalent in India would be Bharat Ratna. Right? And Angela Merkel has been the Chancellor of Germany for four terms. Four terms. And she was the first woman to become the Chancellor of Germany. And also after four terms, she chose to give up. It's not that she, she lost the elections. She chose not to run for the fifth time for the chancellorship. That is the level of trust that people had in her in Germany. So this award has been given to her by President Frank Walter Steinmeier. Uh, award aaj tak sirf do baar diya gaya hai. So she is the third winner of the award. Former chancellors Conrad Adenauer and Helmut Kohl are the only two persons to be awarded this. So she is the third ever recipient of the highest award of Germany. Sare ke sare jo leaders hain conservative Christian Democratic Union party ke rahe hain. So Merkel 2005 se 2021, 16 years four year term hoti hai Germany mein chancellor ki. To 16 saal tak wo Germany ki chancellor rahi hain. She did not seek a fifth term. So Germany ka jo highest award jo ne mila hai, uska exact naam hota hai, Federal Cross of Merit. Agar hum English mein baat karein, Germany mein ye kaafi difficult naam hai. So I don't know how to pronounce it, it's very difficult to pronounce. So German language mein, it's called something like this. And in English it is Federal Cross of Merit. It is awarded by the President of Germany to individuals who have made significant contributions to the nation's cultural, economic or political life or have provided outstanding service to society. This was in 1951. In the past 72 years, mein, she is only the third person to get this award, the Federal Cross of Merit. That is something really impressive. So, Angela Merkel, and she has also been in news for the last few months because she was given the UNESCO Peace Prize as well, and she was also given the Nansen Refugee Award. So, in the last four, four to five months, she has received two other major awards, which are the UNESCO Peace Prize and the Nansen Refugee Award. And this is the third distinction to her credit. Asha Bhosle is set to really, uh, receive uh, Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Puraskar. So Lata Mangeshkar uh, died uh, last year and uh, in her memory this award was constituted Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Award. So she, uh, so this award is now gone to Asha Bhosle for this year. Asha Bhosle is another well-known Hindi film singer and uh, this award was established by the Mangeshkar family and trust in the memory of Lata Mangeshkar. 24th April ko award diya gaya, which is the anniversary of their father Dinanath Mangeshkar's uh, death. Right? Ye uh, award sabse pehle uh, Narendra Modi ji ko diya gaya tha. The award was first presented to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and this is given to someone who has made significant contribution to the nation and its people. So it's not necessary that Lata Mangeshkar ke naam par hai, to ye sirf film industry mein hi kisi ko diya ja sakta hai. It can be given to anyone who had, who have uh, contributed significantly to the nation and its people. Argentina is going to host the under 20 FIFA World Cup. So earlier, Indonesia was set to host, but FIFA has taken the right of Indonesia back and has given it to Argentina. The reason was 
uh, Indonesia's, uh, you know, the decision was made after Indonesia's Football Association cancelled the draw scheduled to take place in Bali due to governor's refusal to host Israel's team. So one of the governors of uh, Indonesia refused to host the team of Israel, maybe because of some, uh, you know, some uh, personal rivalry or something, some dispute of their own. But this is not allowed in international uh, sporting events. You cannot have bilateral relations come in the way of sp international sporting events. Or is it FIFA Under 20 World Cup? Ab men, yo jo hai wo Argentina ko de diya gaya hai. The first time it was held in 1977, and now it is being held. And finally, Mr. Sonam Wangchuk has got the Santokba Humanitarian Award. Now this man is Sonam Wangchuk. So if you look carefully, Mr. Sonam Wangchuk is that person who was the inspiration behind the character of Amir Khan in the movie Three Idiots. So Three Idiots ke bilkul end mein, movie ke bilkul end mein, jo Ladakh mein ek school dikhaya gaya hai and Amir Khan is playing the role of a teacher named Funsuk Wangdu. So the inspiration behind that character was Mr. Sonam Wangchuk who also lives in Ladakh and is a school teacher also and does a lot many other innovative things there. So Mr. Sonam Wangchu, an engineer, hai, innovator, hai, educationist and sustainable development reformist. We will talk about their achievements. So they have been given the Santokba Humanitarian Award, which is a very prestigious award. This award is given by Shri Ramakrishna Exports, SRK. Ki taraf se, and its philanthropic arm, Sri Ramakrishna Knowledge Foundation. So, SRK and SRKKF award this particular award to someone. Wangchuk is the founder director of Students Educational and Cultural Movement of Ladakh, SECMOL, Students Educational and Cultural Movement of Ladakh. Or the Santokba Humanitarian Award hai, is cash prize hai, ek crore rupee ka, and it has been created in honor of late Santokba Dholakia the mother of uh, Govind Dholakia, the founder of SRK and SRKKF. So, his prize money jo hai, usse aapko pata chalega, kitna important award hoga. Ek crore rupai is ki prize money hai. So, what has he done apart from being a reformist, uh, sustainable development advocate? There is a significant, uh, you can say, innovative thing that he has done, which is this. So, if you look at this, this is a ice stupa. Ice stupa means basically Ladakh is a desert. Even though it's an extremely cold region, it's a desert. That means there is dearth of water in Ladakh. So he proposed this idea that there are certain places in Ladakh where water is available during summers. So what he proposed is that there be vertical pillars or vertical fountains of water, just like this. So this is a huge fountain. So just to give you perspective, a person would be of this size. So this is the height of a person. So you can see how tall it is. It's just like a, a five or six story building. So he proposed that a water in vertical columns be spread like a fountain. So jab sardi aayenge, us time pe wo pani jo hai, wo ice banna shuru ho jayega. Because it is fresh water, it will solidify and it will solve the problem of water scarcity in Ladakh during winter months. So what people can do is they can take this ice because this is fresh water. So they can break this ice in small pieces, can take it away, can melt it and use it for drinking purposes. Otherwise, Ladakh may winter times may pani fresh water ki bahut killat ho jati thi. So he invented this ice tupa technique which involves a creation of artificial glaciers that store winter water in the form of cone-shaped ice heaps. So they store water, fresh water. And this technique has been instrumental in addressing the water scarcity issue in Ladakh. And he also involved in tackling other environmental challenges here. So this is just one example of the various things that Mr. Wangchuk has done for Ladakh. Right? So that is all for this particular session. If you like the information that we have shared with you, do share this video with your friends as well and give this video a thumbs up. We'll see you next week with April week 4 current affairs. Till then, this is me Manish Mittal signing off. Thank you.